Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Chintan Pancholi Parekh. I am a um, PT who has been certified in the Shroff method. I've been practicing for over 15 years. And uh, these are kind of sort of my disclosures. Um, uh, we have a practice, it's the largest in the nation. We have um, three locations, Manhattan, um, Totowa, New Jersey, which is Wayne area, and in the Princeton area. I'm also uh, part of the medical advisory board for Shift Scoliosis, which is a non-for-profit organization. Marissa will go over her um, disclosures. So. What is Shroth? We would be here for days if I went into exactly what Shroth is. Uh, but in the US, Shroth is the primary school for scoliosis-specific exercises. It is skilled physical therapy that a uh, physical therapist goes, um, who is licensed, has to go for advanced training. It takes days. Um, something different about scoliosis-specific exercises, it is individually adapted exercises. It's personalized according to the patient's medical and physical therapy evaluations. So when you look at general PT, we may, which may be more low impact, general strengthening and stretching, um, core exercises. So some of these um, protocols, I don't know how to do that. Sorry, my notes are longer than my slides. Um, but when you compare the scoliosis-specific exercises and the general PT, that's where the disconnect begins. Because a lot of the research that has happened since the 1940s show that um, general PT does not impact cob angles, whether to stabilize or regress, or even any other long-term outcomes, aside from maybe potentially pain. So when PTs, as PTs, we were instructed on addressing scoliosis, that's where the evidence was led. So our curriculum re reflected this limited research and uh, limited treatment op options that we would have. So basically our options were, yes, yeah, stretch the concave side, you know, strengthen the convex side, let's do some core strengthening, not addressing the 3D nature of the scoliosis or even the neural schema changes. Like a couple of the other speakers says, you've been in this off shifted position for a long time and not even realizing. This is all changing. In the past five years, um, there's a lot of research coming out that is different than what happened in the earlier years. Um, the curriculums are in the physical therapy programs are more doctoral level programs. Um, they are pushing the evidence into it. Um, we, as a practice, are now also providing um, elective courses, for example, my staff that's here um, has put together a elective course for Rutgers University for the physical therapy program that tells the new graduating PTs that there is something else besides stretching over a ball on one side for, um, for scoliosis. Um, this is really um, led by the fantastic work and diligent work by members of SOSORT and SRS. Um, SRS, we know, is a Scoliosis Research Society. Um, Want to give a little brief um, intro to what SOSORT is. It is the International Society on Scoliosis, Orthopedic, and Rehabilitation Treatment. It was established in 2004, and their mission is to increase the evidence that rehabilitation and orthopedic treatment are effective and to provide efficient intervention. Um, they also put out a um, scientific journal, which is called Scoliosis and Spinal Disorder. It is a open access multidisciplinary journal. So basically everything from prevention to diagnosis to analysis of conservative care, surgical management um, of all the spinal deformities is reviewed in that um, journal. So what is scoliosis-specific exercises? Well, it's a whole, there's a bunch of them. Schroth um, is from Germany. Barcelona Scoliosis Physical Therapy School is BSPTS. That's from Spain. They're essentially tied, very similar in um, their protocols. CIS is from Italy. FITS, Dobomed are from Poland. Leon is from France. And um, there's another one, I think Side Shift is from Japan. Um, I put together um, a slide of, you can see the variation in some of these exercises from each of these schools. They're, they're varied, but I wanna more importantly um, bring your attention, oops, one more, back, 
to this one. Eric actually put together this slide, so thank you. Um, I think it really highlights all of the areas of active auto autocorrection that a scoliosis specific exercise can um, address. As you can see, each of the schools are listed on the left and where each of the school addresses these corrections. Um, not to be biased, but Shroff does address all of them. <laughs> um, so how did this journey of all of these European schools um, and Eastern schools, how did it come over to the United States? Um, over 20 years ago, a woman named Beth Jansen, she's a physical therapist, um, found herself on the other end as a mom with a son with AIS and said, well, I'm a PT and I can't help my son. So in her real diligent research, um, she found herself in uh, Dr. Rigo's office at Barcelona Scoliosis Physical Therapy School. And since then, she has really worked very hard to bring the Schroff-based curriculum over to the United States um, through our American Physical Therapy Association. So it's all approved education and not just, you know, snakeskin oil type things. Um, many of her original class actually um, are instructors themselves, Marissa being one of them. Um, and they have established something called scoliosis education seminars, which is the leading school to certify the therapist in the United States. So I listed their website. So if you're looking for a therapist near you that can help, um, scoliosis education seminars um, .com is the right place to start. Um, if you are looking international, it's the BSPTS website. So I just wanted to give a little nod to Dr. Rigo and Beth for bringing this to the United States. And I'm going to hand it over to Marissa because she's going to expand into what exactly Schroth is and what does it all mean for us. Thank you, Chintan. Okay, this is the older tech, so it's just forward. Yes, okay. So um, thank you. My disclosures were listed before for those that need it. So the Schroth method, um, while the history of general physical therapy um, had shown through the evidence that it was not necessarily um, had great outcomes when connected to AIS. New research is growing. So the big question is, what is the difference and what are the similarities between scoliosis specific exercise and general physical therapy? Um, so the Schroth method still contains a wide number of concepts that are built into general physical therapy, the sensory system, the proprioceptive system. So for families, I always tell them, if you close your eyes and you put your hands straight out, you can still tell me that my, uh, I can still feel that my palm is facing down and my fingers are open, right? That is your joints, that's your muscles, telling your brain where your body is in space. So that's proprioception. Um, neuromuscular re-education, the idea that your healthy brain has adapted over time to follow the shift in your spine. And now we as skilled therapists will be reintroducing and retraining the brain to come back to a more central three-dimensionally symmetrical as much as possible um, sense of your body and space. We do still incorporate basic and specific strengthening and stretching. Um, this idea that we'll touch upon later on um, of a scoliotic schema or a brain schema that has been adapted to this shift in the spine um, was originally outlined um, by Dr. Burwell um, and here is actually a picture example of what I'm talking about. So in this first slide, um, in our clinic, this is not just a patient who stands up against a grid. We actually have a standardized, uh, specific verbal direction of stand as tall and corrected as you know how. So that this reflects this individual patient's idea of where they are in space. And so what you can see here when he first presented is that he grows tall and over, and this feels very centered to him. This is what he understands his body to be in space. 20 hours of education and training later, when we ask the same question, please stand as tall and centered as you know how, we can see here that there is a shift in how his brain and body understands where he is in space. So we're very fortunate that 
um, through the diligent work of SOSORT members and family members and teams and SRS um, physicians, we have a growing rapid body uh, of literature, um, some of it level two um, and moving into hopefully level one. Um, one of the earlier randomized controlled uh, trials that was published um, was from Dr. Montico out in Italy. And the conclusion was that a program of active self-correction and task-oriented exercises was superior to the traditional basic scoliosis exercises in both reducing the cov angle and increasing the quality of life for those with mild AIS. Follow-up within this patient group demonstrated that those effects lasted at least one year. Um, to date, I don't know if they have continued to follow that patient group um, beyond that first year, but that is obviously a question. Um, compliance, just like do you wear your brace? Exercise program is going to have the same questions. Are they doing their exercises? And the same question of are they wearing their brace correctly applies to the exercises. Are they doing their exercises correctly? So these are big questions that we have in front of us. I'm going to pass through this because we are fortunate to have one of the lead investigators of um, this particular study that will follow me and go into more detail. So this is one of the basic algorithms for um, understanding the fact that your brain talks to your muscles and your joints in space and your joints and your muscles return communication to your brain so that you understand where you are in space. So in the simplest term, a healthy brain will adapt to a changing three-dimensional position of the central support, support structure, the spine. So the shift in physics often results in compensatory patterns of the surrounding joints and muscles and the biomechanical patterns. So my most common um, example of this is as your thoracic rib cage is rotating back and producing that prominence that um, everybody notes with that forward bend test. Very often, the shoulder blade on that same side is going to elevate and wing out. It just physically needs to kind of get out of the way as the rib cage is coming back. Well, all of a sudden, that shoulder blade, which is very dynamic and part of every day, they pick up their book bags, they throw them over their shoulder, it's changing the dynamics of the motor pattern, how that shoulder blade is controlled. Maybe it's no longer depressing. Maybe now it's lifting too much. So do these muscle patterns then put them at risk for maybe overuse syndromes, a little bit more musculoskeletal pain and challenges? While most physicians and, and therapists would agree and understand that scoliosis itself doesn't necessarily produce pain, there certainly can be some secondary musculoskeletal challenges within individual patients that do produce pain. So a BSPTS certified, which is the dominant certification in the United States, will provide a comprehensive evaluation and assessment of the individual curve their location and how that curve has impacted the postural schema and the biomechanical patterns. So I often describe to families, if you can imagine in the simplest of terms, that scoliosis can be like a spiral staircase that is collapsing, we will actually educate families and individuals on how to elongate the spine, realign, and then hopefully derotate. But that's a motor skill, just like a sport. So we have to teach that to patients. And by teaching that, we then ask them to challenge that new motor skill in all three dimensions. So they're going to perform an exercise on your back, side, and belly. And also with some racks and some interesting fun positions. So it's important that it's not just the exercises, but we're also integrating into a task-specific, activities of daily living. How do you sit, stand, walk, run? Maybe your favorite sport that you play has been impacted by your biomechanics and this curve. So while the research is growing and we're very excited to continue pursuing this research, RCTs are not enough. It's an excellent beginning, but there is a mountain of research that needs to be addressed underneath of it. How exactly does Schroth work? 
What's the optimal number of hours? Is it one-on-one? -on -one? Is it group? Is it mixed? Um, right now in the United States, there are challenges. This is still fairly new in the US, maybe s seven years at best. And insurance reimbursement rates have challenges, geographical limitations. You know, seven years ago, you would have had to have flown to see Beth in Wisconsin if you had wanted this, but now you have 180 advanced certified physical therapists across the United States and Canada. Um, there's currently not enough research describing what is the optimal program, what is the optimal set of um, exercises together for the individual. And practices and clinics together across the world are actively and aggressively pursuing that so that we can provide you, our families, with those answers. So our recommendations in our clinic, whenever we get new families, are first, find an orthopedic physician who is a member of SRS. SRS, the Scoliosis Research Society, um, will uh, ensure that you have a physician who has um, a, a set commitment to spinal deformity and a depth and breadth of knowledge and experience. If you're searching for a physical therapist, find out where they achieved their certification when, how many patients do they see. If they've made modifications to the original program, ask why and where and how. Your child and you as a family, together with your physician, your orthotist, and your therapist makes up the best team.